Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissistic and antagonistic relationships, people, and situations. So this is one for some of you to reflect on. It may not be, may not be useful for all of you, but I'm sure more than a few of you were scapegoats in your narcissistic family system. Have any of you had the situation where you're a scapegoat and your golden child sibling is rolling up after all these years now that you're adults and asking for help? If that's happened to you, drop in the comments and let's take this one apart. So gosh, it's it, that, that being a scapegoat, never easy. The relationship between the scapegoat and the golden child in a family is a complicated and painful one. The scapegoat is the child in the narcissistic family system who often gets it the worst or almost always gets it the worst. The worst verbal abuse, the most criticism, the neglect, the mockery, the gaslighting. To be a scapegoat can result in a cascade of psychological harm as a person emerges into adulthood and people who have histories of scapegoats will make likely or likely to experience a lack of self-worth, self-loathing, anger, sadness, social anxiety, fear, trauma bonding. And the risk of perpetuating these cycles in adult relationships is high. There's very little that's good about being a scapegoat for how much harm it does to the person. Now, the golden child in the narcissistic family system is the heir apparent, the recipient of the narcissistic parent's generosity, compliments, and largesse. Golden children are golden children for a variety of reasons, sometimes because they look like the narcissistic parent because they're the oldest child. They are the child that's the gender that the parent wants. They are attractive. They're good at sports. They're good at school or they're good at something that gets the parent validation. The golden child may get more stuff. They may get their own room. They may get their tuition paid for while other children in the family don't. They may get privileges that their siblings don't get. They may get opportunities that their siblings don't get. Now, all is not perfect in the golden child world, though. If you, for example, have, if there's a golden child who had a difficult temperament, they may have an easy ride as a, as a golden child, but not care that their siblings were harmed by all that happened. However, when a golden child actually does have empathy or kindness, they have a good temperament, it's a very difficult position to be in at times, and more than, more than at times, quite often. And they may feel guilt about how their siblings are being treated. They may feel concern for their other parent. They may feel isolated from their siblings because they are the chosen one. And their narcissistic parent may triangulate to keep the golden child away from the others. So as you can imagine in childhood, the space between the golden child and the scapegoat is very fraught. Unkind golden children may bully their scapegoated sibling, sort of acting as an emissary, an extension of the narcissistic parent, and giving that parent validation by being cruel to the scapegoated sibling, right? Now, nice, sweet, kind, and compassionate golden children may try to connect with the scapegoated child, but with mixed results. Some scapegoated children will be put off by a golden child sibling. Some may welcome the support. These situations vary, but no matter what it is, it is a complicated relationship. As the children rise into adolescence and adulthood, all of this gets even more complicated because things like money and resources matter more and matter in different ways. Decisions about college, cars, resources, rent, are often shaped by the narcissistic parents. And as a result, the scapegoated child may have a very different experience going into adulthood and have to struggle more, not have as enriched an experience, or maybe even not to get to avail themselves of almost any opportunities. All kinds of concerns about whether enough money has been set aside for the golden child's tuition or wedding or whatever may be raised with little regard for those issues and resources for the scapegoated child. So as adulthood approaches, the tension between the children in these roles can increase and there can be a greater gulf that grows between the golden child and the scapegoat. But 
And this actually also came from a few emails I got. My favorite stories are when the scapegoats get out, get out there, they grow up, and despite their heavy psychological burden, put on their resilience and they just do good. The smart scapegoats distance themselves from their family and move away, which is actually always a great move. Sc scapegoats sometimes fall in love with a great person who is healthy and safe and kind. A scapegoat, again, can be quite resilient. Maybe they do well in a career and make decent money. But the scapegoats can do good. And I love stories about scapegoats who do good. It make me so happy. So while the golden child has the benefit of resource and cheerleaders and are sort of raised and treated like a prized thoroughbred, sometimes all of that spoiling and kid gloves leaves them sort of ineffectual. And maybe they fail out of their fancy school. They kind of have trust fund brat vibes or they don't have the discipline for the job or they meet someone narcissistic themselves. Remember, golden children may be playing out trauma bonded cycles too. But for some reason, if for some reason, stuff doesn't work out for the golden child, who knows? They end up making bad investments, their career doesn't work out, they get into substance use, they have a bad marriage, whatever. So what happens when the golden child tries to hit up the scapegoat for help? What happens? I'd be curious if this happened to any of you. You're the scapegoat. Golden child hits you up. Drop that in the comments. Well, we see a range of stuff that happens there too. Some scapegoats may have just gone no contact, so this is moot. No one in the family can find them. But the ability of social media to find people and the internet to find people means that the family or the golden child might do some detective work and be able to find the scapegoat unless the scapegoat's really off the grid. But that doesn't mean the scapegoat will take the call. So those who go no contact and stick to it, well, then that's just done. Then there's no golden child reaching out. But some scapegoats, even if they are doing very well in their lives, may still have an experience that trauma bonded pull back to the family of origin. And that may even be magnified by the family who will insist that the scapegoat should help the golden child sibling because that is the right thing to do. It all starts feeling really Cinderella right about here. And that scapegoat may still be affected by all of the invalidated, triangulated memories and may feel compelled to help. It's quite possible that when the scapegoat steps up to help, the golden child may just take in an entitled way, not really thank them, and it'll just be a continuation and a riff on the entitlement of the family system toward the scapegoat, a pattern that rarely changes. Now, obviously, the Hallmark Channel version of this is that the scapegoat helps the golden child and they become good friends, and isn't it all great? It's probably not as likely. Now, not all golden children go on to become narcissistic. In fact, many golden children feel quite ashamed and feel guilty and feel sort of stuck because their family of origin may have put more resources into them, so they may even feel more beholden to their family. And if they turn out to have, if the golden child turns out to have a messy life, they may feel even more guilt and shame, and having to turn to the scapegoat is something that the entire family system may not be able to get their head around, and the family may often view the scapegoat success as dumb luck, rather than the byproduct of some really hard work. Many a scapegoated person has lived a lifetime thinking, this is it, they are finally going to see me. Hmm, probably not. The dysfunction of these family systems often dies hard, and even if the scapegoat is doing well in their adult lives, being back in that family system can feel like kryptonite. If you are a scapegoated person who has a golden child sibling who is sniffing around in adulthood and asking for help, only you know what feels right to you. But if you do tender an offer of help, don't expect that folks in your family will look up and say, oh, look at our scapegoat. They did okay. We should have believed them all along. These family systems are often organized to keep that person down and remain stuck in a distorted view of themselves. If you offer help, recognize that it will only bring the dysfunction of your narcissistic family system into starker focus. You do what feels right to you, and yes, 
sometimes this is how the story goes. Now, if the scapegoat is going to go ask the golden child for help, well, that ends up becoming a masterclass in humiliation. That's the story for another day. Thanks again.